So, Netivot Shalom Ala Torah, Sefer Vaikra, Parashat Achremot, or as you say here, Achremos, uh, we're right after Pesach. Vechai mm. Bahem, right? So, that's the topic. Live with them. Veshamatem ut chukotai vesh mishpatai, asher yase otam adam vechai bahem. And you keep or watch my uh, laws and rules that a person should do, and he should live with them, or with them, within them. And there are sages, Darshu, Khazal saying, right, in this Pasuk, that he should live with them and not die with them. So from here we learn that the purpose of the mitzvot is to live, and not to die, and they got to the conclusion that if somebody has a, a, a life risk, and he needs to violate the mitzvot, the rule, the restriction, and he will be able to stay alive, then we do that. We do that. The Uncurus, but Uncurus, he, he translated, bahem, right? Lehaye, what do you mean, chai bahem, live with them? So he said, lechaye alma, to the, to, the, to the world, the world that we're living in. And Rashi explained, lechaye bahem, live with them, to the olam abba, to the next world, the world to come. This is what Rashi said. Shim Tomar Bo'olamad, if you said in this world, eventually anyone dies. So therefore, you do the mitzvot in order for you to live with them is for the next world, for the Olam Abba. Because everybody dies. The mashmaut v'chai bahem in olam because the meaning of chai bahem is like infinite. The olam. Forever and ever. So he said, it looks like these two uh, uh, explanation, translation, interpretation are contradict each other. One said for this world, one said for the, for the next world. And according to Rashad Chazal, it says on Kiyuma Mitzvot, for fulfilling the mitzvot itself, that if somebody is fulfilling the mitzvot, he is alive. If somebody doesn't keep the mitzvot, he's like a dead person, even though he walk, he talk, he work, he pay taxes, he's a dead person if he doesn't do the mitzvot. But according to uh, to the Targum, which is Uncle Luce and Rashi, it's talking about the reward for the next world, for to come. We also need to explain, according to the Targum, our our, our sages in Masechet Avo, they said, Right? Be like servant or slave that uh, is serving the, the Rav, but not in order to receive a reward. So how come the Torah promise Sakhar, like the Torah is like promising a reward, the Chayba and the Olam Abba to the next world, right? So it's, it is a reward. Right? So of course we know that these two explanations are one thing. It's including Chayba the two meanings. First, Chayba which means here in this world, he's fulfilling the mitzvot, is it should Keep the mitzvot the chayut. Chayut, kol aguf va'evarim. I don't know if you have one uh, English word to translate uh, chayut. Chayut, it's a word that includes vitality, life, uh, energy, excitement, enthusiasm. This is how we should keep the mitzvot. Chay, with all the body, all the parts. That they, even the bones will say, who is like Hashem? Nobody like Hashem. And he said, all the 630 mitzvot are depending on, on, the, on the someone that will do the mitzvot. Otherwise, if nobody do it, what, what's the purpose of them to exist? And we know that each mitzvah that we keep sanctify a part in the body and sanctify a spiritual part in the body. 613 total. And this matter is also the source, it's the root and the source of the Chai Baim for the for the you know, next world to come. So it could be few, two things. Right? When we say Olam Abba, usually we refer as after we die. But also Olam Abba can be the world after Mashiach comes. So I'm not sure what is Rash Karlin. That we heard that in Shamayim they declare 
that the Jew, that fulfill the Torah and the Mitzvot and keep Shabbos with all the Dikdukim, but he doesn't feel pleasure on Shabbat, then when he gets to the upper world, right, to the Olam Abba, they will give him his share in Gan Eden for keeping Shabbos, but he will not feel anything. He will be like a, like a bench that is placed in Gan Eden. And he will not going to feel anything over there. In the explanation, what does it mean? Because the pleasure of heaven, of Gan Eden, where the tzaddikim, the righteous persons, right, the righteous people sits and they have crowns in their head and they're enjoying the glory of the Shekhinah. What does it mean? I'm not sure. But we know that our sages are teaching us, for example, over there it's the learning. What we learn, we're not scraping even the first layer. So whenever you learn here, you're going to learn over there, but you're going to learn the real thing. For example, you know you have a book, and at the back of the book, you have like a small, tiny little paragraph that explains about the author and what the book is about. So this is basically what we're learning today. When we get to Ulama Ba, to Gan Eden, whatever we learn, we will learn actually the book itself, the spiritual knowledge. He said, and he says here in our other saying that this is actually our pleasure. So if somebody doesn't have the pleasure of learning, of keeping Shabbat, then he will be in Gan Eden, but maybe he will not feel anything according to what he said. He said, we learn here from if the fire of hell is being generated from the fire of desire towards the sins right, in this world, in the Olamas, that's why people that are being punished, it's like the punishment is like in the same level when they did the sin. And the same way, the fire of Gidusha that is created in this world will, will provide the pleasure that the Jew will have in the Olam Abba in Gan Eden. And therefore, we need to do the mitzvot with vitality, with excitement, with enthusiasm, even if we don't have it. And then he will be Chai Ba'em the Olam Abba. He said, these two explanations are not going to predict each other because it's one thing in the root and one is depending on the other. Chaibayim, you have to do this excitement, the, the, the mitzvot with excitement, and then in Olam Abba, you, with that excitement, you will be able to have the, the pleasure in the Olam Abba. And the Torah emphasized with Gisha Torah and with Shamartim Kukotai, right? So we have Chukot and we have Mishpatim. Mishpatim is the common sense. You have to respect your father, you have to uh, cross right. somebody the, the, the road, you have to give a charity. These are the mishpatim. It makes sense. It's logical, etc. But the chukim is something that we don't understand. And here we said the shamarte mutukotai, which means we don't understand the reason. And the Torah wrote, even if someone doesn't really understand the rational behind it, right? Just an analogy. Let's say that I have a, a road. Two lanes each direction, uh, straight line, and there is a sign over there that says 25 miles per hour. I can do easily 100 miles per hour. It's a few miles away. No, 25. Why? I don't know. I have to keep the law. I'm keeping the law. Even if I don't understand, it doesn't make sense. I don't understand the rationale. Somebody probably have a good reason why. So this is the hooking that we don't understand. And we do only because it's a shame will. It doesn't make sense. But if we do that, also we'll, it would be part of the pleasure. Because the essence itself, the essence that we are doing, the, the Shem's will, that will bring the the, 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 the time, the taste of it, the vitality to that. As Maran Admor, but the Vesh Moritz Rodel said, Sahala Verinal is Zechem al right? But every time when we, we pray, you can see that we're using many different words of happiness, enjoyment, Sahala, Rina, right? To the commemorating his kingdom. And he said, Uma Gufa, simply by we say that during the davening, and we have that, uh, that schut, you say, Shem Hashem, Baruch Ata Hashem, right? We, that should fill up with joy. Seriously, when we sit in, in shul and we say a, a bracha, when you see what's going on in the world, and these stupid people that, <laughs> that protesting against, let's say, Israel, right? Even without understanding that, <laughs> if they will be, under the ruling of the same people that they're fighting for them, they will be the first to go. Right? They don't have it. They don't understand. You see oh, how the crazy it is. 
the only only to see the machine and see all the people dabbling it together, just you say Baruch Hata Hashem, that should make us very happy. Even if we don't understand what we're doing over there. But in our point, we don't we understand what we're doing over there. We're keeping the mitzvot of Hashem, the creator. So according to that, we found Shomro, the Chai Bahem, the one that said they live with them. It's not it's not like the main meaning, it's not promising reward for the next world. Because really, we should worship Hashem, we should serve Hashem without getting a reward. The reward will come by default. And sometimes we said that, you know, we, we get something in, in, in this world uh, because uh, Hashem needs us to facilitate. By the way, I don't think you, you can see me, right, with the camera. That's odd. That's very odd. Do you see me or just see the background? No, no. Okay, so you see the background. Okay, only the background. Good. Just the background. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what. Uh, what happened. Just the background. Yeah. But I saw you for a second, and then you went off again. He's playing with us. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, that's that's weird. Okay, go on. That's weird. Okay, I did. Uh, go on, go on. Okay. Oh, wow. When I hide it, look, this is weird. I put my hand here, and then you can see me. Okay, fine. No bandwidth. So we need to explain. It says that the purpose of the creation is to do good to the creatures, right? To the, the, the Hashem wants to do good for the, for the people that are, are everything in the universe that he created. But Hashem is good, and the way of the good is to do good. Otherwise, what's the purpose? And it cannot actually express or manifest its character, right? One of the character metaphorically. And therefore, Hashem created the world to do good for the, for the, for the creatures. And the purpose of the good is that when the flesh and blood that is it sink into the homer, the materialism, the physical thing, will get to the pleasure of, the spiritual pleasure of Hashem, and when a Jew will go past that, and he will transgress a mitzvah, then he, he actually, like again, metaphorically, he calls like to Hashem not to be able to influence and to give the abundance and the, and the, and the influence of the people to give, to give them the shefa. When, when somebody is, is transgressing a, a mitzvah and he causing a sorrow in upper world, right? Hashem becomes sad because he, he, he like preventing the purpose of why Hashem created the, the world. So he said here, but when a Jew is fulfilling Hashem's will, and he keeping the mitzvot in excitement, then the abundance, the shefa will come down to him. And that will actually fulfill in the purpose of why Hashem created the, 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 the creation, the purpose of the creation. That's the inyan of Chai Baim to the next world. It's not a reward, but it's something that comes by default. When he's do Hashem will, then everything will come. If he does it, it will not come. And that's for, for the same thing after, after we die. It will continue. For the neshamot, for the spiritual one, and that will actually will fulfill, or or, or the purpose of Hashem will be uh, uh, fulfilled by us to do that. But there is, according to that, we can say, right? We said that a few times a day in Kriyat Shema, right? If you will listen, It's a double listening, right? Double hearing. El to the to the mitzvot that I'm commanding you today. To love Hashem, our God, and and serve Him with all our hearts, right? Even inclination, good inclination, in all our souls, right? Ruach nefesh dechada, right? We have like few parts of our spiritual being. Then Hashem will give a rain on your land, etc. Right? And I give you the food for you and for your for your animals, etc. He said, "Lechora." It's like allegedly it looked like. Hashem, Hashem, or the Torah, it 
promise us reward for keeping the mitzvot. We just said, right? If you keep the mitzvot, then you love Hashem, and you do everything, you will get the right that this figure did. So, so you, do, you do give us a reward for keeping the mitzvot. And specifically, right, when it says after, when it says after love Hashem and serve Him with all our hearts, right, and all our souls, which means that if we're worshiping Hashem in Mesirut Nefesh, in a higher level of love, right? And then if we do that, then what, 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 what does it matter if, if, Hashem, if Hashem gave us the, the, the rain? But the explanation is that it's not a reward. It's for something that comes by default, that Hashem facilitating and helping us. And by default, if we listen to Hashem and we do the mitzvot with love and we serve Him with our evil inclination, bad inclination, good inclination, etc., with our soul, then by default, to Mamela, the Natati, it will be given to us. It's there. It's very simple. It's like we can say that it's an analogy that the abundance, the Shefa, the good thing coming from Shamaim constantly, they never stop. And we are a vessel to contain. But they have paths, they have pipes. And we need to stand below one of the pipes, that's referring to us. Right? Everybody have a pipe, but everything coming to us. And if we do Torah and mitzvot, etc., then we're standing on our place. So everything comes to us. But if we're doing something, it's like a uh, you know, monopoly game. You, 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 you go with the cubes, right? You have a number. But if you do has and Avera, a sin, then you move uh, to a different uh, spot. You don't have the pipe anymore. The Shefa will come in constantly, but we are not receiving it anymore. So it's not like Hashem punishing us. We punish ourselves. We move from our place. So that's why by default, when we do the Torah, we're keeping the mitzvot, that everything will come to us, but not as a reward. It's by default. And we have to do the opposite. We are, we are like stopping it from ourselves. And we're actually preventing from Hashem to enjoy from the fact that he's giving us all of these things. He's giving us, but we're not taking it because we're not there anymore. So as I said, you said, when we are in, in, in trouble and, and, and not happy, what, what's the Shekhinah saying? The Shekhinah said, like, like, uh, you know, it's uh, something on my head and something on my arm. It's not, it's not good. We can explain what's the Mishnah in Masechet Avod mean when it says Mitzvah Goreret Mitzvah and Avera Goreret Avera, right? Like uh, a good deed will, will uh, tow another good deed and, uh, and a violation will bring another violation, right? A friend bring a friend. If it's a positive friend, he bring a positive friend. If it's a negative, he bring, bring negative. He said, I know when we do a Mitzvah, we do Hashem's will. And we come in and, and fulfilling another mitzvah, right? So literally, if you do a mitzvah, by default, you have a second one. Why? Because Hashem's will is that we will do a mitzvah. So you did a mitzvah, you put fill in. Plus, Hashem is happy because you did, you put fill in. So it's like two. It's, uh, it's matching. Mm -hmm. It's exactly in the charity. When, when we, we donate something, somebody donate another, another imam. So you do a mitzvah, you do another mitzvah. You, you fulfill Hashem's will. And chas v'chalila, when we do the sin, we do double sin. Because not only that we transgress on something, Hashem also is not happy with that. Right? So that's why they said the mitzvah go at mitzvah and avra go at avra. And Hashem wants to influence, Hashem wants to give his good. And in, in our actions, sometimes we prevented it. And that's why the Torah said the chaiben, that we should live with them, we should be excited, we should be happy, we should do the mitzvot. So Bezat Hashem will do mitzvot, and I want to dedicate the shiur to the success of uh, all the, the, the soldier and the kvot abitachon. And for uh, Aliyat Shema, for all the souls that uh, that died, Machshma Vizikhsam to all all our enemies. Thank you for listening, and have a great Shabbos. Amen. Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Right. Shabbat Shalom.